Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and I'm back with part four, I think. I did part one. Last, I think part two was last. Yeah, last part was part two. Now, we go to the very next day. And Izumi wakes up to a creature wrapped around both her and Bakugo. And yes, Leo, you get food. Come on. Feeding my cats. Uh, wrapped around her and Bakugo. And she grabs the creature's head and pulls it off of her. And the creature is whining and complaining about this. And she just gives a death glare at the creature. And she doesn't know why, but she's very angry at the creature. And I saw a lot of your comments on the names. <sighs> I feel like all you guys are just trying to torture me on trying to say names. Because I can't speak Japanese. I freaking can't speak it. Jesus! Ugh. Oh. God damn hiccups. I can't speak Japanese. So you trying to give me Japanese names. I literally need to go to translate and then get one of my friends to who does speak Japanese to give me the way to say it and tells me like 15 times and I hate bothering her to do it. But you guys apparently love me trying to say Japanese names and maybe even butchering them. So, some of them might not even be Japanese names. I don't know. But I'll be right back. Okay, first off, before I read any of them out loud, Ander Reed. Penny, if it's female. And fucking Joy, if it's male. Sorry for my cursing. But, <clears throat> Penny, I understand, but Joy. Joy is not a masculine name. It's not even a name. It is an emotion. That's my opinion on that. Kaburamaru? Kaburamaru? I think I know who he is. Isn't he the guy from uh, the train train movie for Demon Slayer? And then she, Shinobu. I forget who that is. But I've seen Demon Slayer. It, it, I've seen Demon Slayer. I know how to say that. I'm not having a slifer the sky dragon here, okay? Um freaking the best name out of all these. <sighs> Yeah, I saw the new Gearbox name, or new Gearbox game. By the way, uh, if you guys haven't checked out, check out my community tab. I'm going to be posting updates about it. I'm heading off to my grandparents tomorrow, uh, so I'm probably not going to be able to get a video out on Sunday early in the morning, but, or not early in the morning, at all Sunday, because I'm probably going to be settling in and probably either cooking or socializing with my grandparents. But Monday, I'll definitely be able to get uh, videos out to you guys. Just I'm going to keep you guys updated with community posts all the time while I'm at my grandparents. Because I'm also going to be helping with work at my grandparents. And I was planning on a D&D &D campaign with uh, Pure Fox. Or Fox. Uh, his He collabed with me on the... What if Femdeku was in the military? 
the chivalry chivalry of a failed knight. That series is uh, I'm sad to say, but that series has to go because we got to sidetracked. And he's working on biz- bigger prospects for his channel. I completely understand. He wants to go towards his way of doing it. It's fine. He does weird and wacky ones. Uh, Mr. Lazy. Uh, that's his YouTube channel. Uh, if you join the Discord, I'll probably get a Discord link for this episode. Or this, yeah, this episode of this series. Uh, I'll put one in the de- description. Mr. Lays, you hit him up. He is freaking awesome. Dude, he's an awesome dude. I've talked to him. He does texting stories. And his Russian Deku. Oh my god, Lazy. Shout out to your Russian Deku. Hilarious. You guys should go check him out. I might be able to get a link to his channel. I don't remember. I'll look if I can. I'll try to get you guys. Hey, I'll try to keep you guys updated. But Tuesday to Thursday of next week, I'm going to be off the grid. Literally, I'm not going to have any cell phone service. So if you guys are wondering where I go, it's I'm pretty much deep in the woods of California where no one can find me. Not even my parents. Well, my parents, if they actually go up to my cabin, but if they try to contact me with cell phones, can't. So that's where I go. If I just, if you guys haven't uh, been around. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's get back into the story. Okay, I'm back. I'm in my domain, my room. So I'm going to be a little quieter than I normally am. But otherwise, I'm going to be normal. So, I don't really like any of the names that you guys sent me. But, I'm going to go with Shinobu. I'm probably butchering that. But I think it's like Shinobi because it's close to Shinobi. So, if it's not... Screw me then. I'm butchering it if it's not. Sorry, I can't help it. I'm American. The American tongue is my language. So, let's go to... It's the next day. And Izumi is currently staring daggers at Shinobu. Yes, Shinobu is going to be female. And Shinobu's squirming. And finally, Izumi's like, finally, you freaking go. She lets Shinobu go, and Shinobu drops and squirms underneath the bed. This is a massive bed because, well, it's a massive room because it has to have two behemoths in it. So how the rooms originally went, it was Izumi's, Bakugo's, Mina's, and so on for the girls. But since Bakugo's room got destroyed from the behemoth attack at UA, they're like, hey, why don't we just attach these rooms? More room for the behemoths. So, uh, Rose gets Bakugo's old room. Shinobu gets Rose's old area. And Izumi and Bakugo get the same bed. And every time Izumi climbs into bed and Bakugo joins her, Bakugo's red-faced. And Izumi thinks that Bakugo's sick and that the aether that has affected Bakugo positively and negatively has uh, had side effects. Like she's always having a fever or she's all her body temperature is always hotter than normal. Hold on. 
sorry about that. My mother was spraying me down because I got some sunburns from doing a lot of yard work today. So, let's get back to the story. So, currently, Shinobu is squirming and just squirmed underneath the bed. And that squirming awoke the sleeping beauty that's in front of Izumi. And Izumi was thinking this, and she didn't want to voice it. But she's been having these thoughts of fairy tales. And she's been told of fairy tales. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. And not the traditional Sleeping Beauty, but the Maleficent. If anybody's seen that movie, the Maleficent version. Where it's not true love from the prince, but true love from the one who raised her. That, uh, <laughs> saves her, but she's been having these thoughts, and she doesn't know where they're coming from, but she knows that this isn't normal for her, because she normally thinks, oh, what can I do differently when I fight a behemoth? And her emotions are sealed away. They're put away so far that she can't even know when they're leaking out of the vault. She doesn't even know that they are. But ever since she saw Bakugo, she's been having her emotions leak out. So she's been thinking of the old fairy tales that her parents have taught, told her. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The Poison Apple. Um, and she's been thinking of these, and yeah, you're like, oh, it's going to be so romantic. No, 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 no. She's been the bad guy in these stories. And Bakugo's been the princess in these stories. And she's been thinking that, and yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's that relationship. It's that kind of relationship. So, <laughs> Izumi is just, like, why do I think of this all of a sudden? And she saw that Bakugo started, is starting to stir, so she releases some killer intent towards uh, Shinobu, who's currently underneath the bed, which, when a Riftstalker released killer intent, they go into rage mode. So Izumi starts to glow a little. She glows a little red. And her aura, because she does have a behemoth aura from being around and eating behemoth so much, starts to spike. And it's strange because it's not spiking in a oh, I'm going to kill you kind of way. It's a spike of, this is mine. Not yours. Mine. And Rose feels this, wakes up, and looks at Izumi. And gives her, like, gives her a, what are you doing kind of look. And Rose goes back to sleep after Izumi calms down because Izumi saw Rose. And currently, Izumi's hugging Bakugo. Very freaking closely. But she's hugging Bakugo. And Bakugo is hugging back. Because she's in a dream. And let's go into Bakugo's head. Bakugo's head. And this is not the normal Bakugo, I know. But this is what Bakugo's thinking right now. Izumi's dying. And she needs to tell Izumi something. But the words are getting stuck in her throat. And something's yanking her away from Izumi. So she's hugging Izumi as hard as possible. Which she's giving a slight hug in the real world. Not an actual death grip like she's trying to do in the dream. Because Izumi doesn't feel when people are doing death grips. Because she's that tough. So, 
We go maybe an hour later. It was 5 o'clock in the morning. Now it's 6 o'clock in the morning. School starts at 8. And Izumi finally says, fine, I gotta wake her up. So she slowly is easing Bakugo awake. And Izumi's like, should I or should I not? Huh. This is Sleeping Beauty and I'm Maleficent. And she said that out loud. And Bakugo heard that and woke up. Acting like she's still waking up very slowly, but she woke up immediately. And she knows exactly what kind of stories that Izumi was told. And Baku was told the exact same stories by Mitsuki. And Baku wanted to see what her reaction is, but she was very choked up on saying this. Said, good morning, honey. And Izumi, without knowing it, goes beat red and gets a nosebleed without knowing it. And she goes, oh, morning. And her nose is still bleeding. She has no idea. And Bakugo busts out laughing. And Izumi's like, why are you laughing? And she feels a drip on her hand. She's like, what? She she finds out that her nose is bleeding. And she runs to the bathroom because she's bleeding everywhere. And sees that her face is completely red. She's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> so after like a few minutes, Izumi's nose stops bleeding. Because no- nosebleeds don't last very long but if they do last long you got to get checked out if they last more like a more than a minute you have to go oh and at least talk to somebody and see if something's wrong because if you don't have nosebleeds ever and you just have a random nosebleed and it lasts for more than a few few seconds or if you have a uh, blood condition, which thins out your blood, I, I suggest you go talk to somebody very quickly with a medical background because nosebleeds aren't supposed to last that long unless you just had a nosebleed earlier that day because I've had nosebleeds that last 5, 10, maybe even 20 minutes but they're consecutive so my nose was really bad that day um Dehydration for the win. Yeah. I don't have that problem anymore. Because I I have more hydration. I'm hydrating more. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm hydrating more. So don't worry. I'm trying to get out of the hydration, uh, dehydration, overhydration uh, kind of loop that I'm stuck in. So... I'm getting better at hydrating continuously instead of two jugs of water then nothing for the rest of the day. I'm I'm stopping that. Hopefully. Getting out of that bad habit, sorry. But back to the story. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's my bad medical history. I had consecutive nosebleeds. All day. Every day. In middle school. Freaking four years ago. No. Actually, not four. Five. (laughs) Freaking 19 this year. (laughs) Wow. Oh. um, I'm going to start a second channel if I can get 150. Or not 150. I'm already over 150. Yay! Over 1.5 thousand subs 
I'll make a gaming channel where I stream Among Us or other games if I have an, enough in my account to buy the game. So I can play it for you guys live. But there's one rule. If I play with you guys live, and I'll get into this later if you guys want me to, uh, there's only one rule. You can't stream snipe. And if I find out somehow you're stream sniping, um, well, you bad. Very, very bad. So, uh, we go to... When they walk into class, Bakugo's looking mighty fine. Yeah, this is what Bakugo looks like in this one. That's why I said Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, kind of. Because she has the aesthetic when she's not in fighting gear. So, uh, we go to... Uh, Later that day, All Might runs in saying, Hello, young slayers. And they go, Sup. And then All Might feels this pressure. And Nezu walks in saying, All Might, wrong class. You are class 1B, not 1A. And he goes, uh, Sorry, sir. I thought I was 1A. And he goes, no, we changed you last minute. Uh, you're class 1B, but they're doing the same exercise. So you tell them what to do. We'll tell, th I'll tell them what to do. You tell class 1B, I'll tell class 1A. And then we'll have a fight between class 1A and B, and B, and then the exercise, which you will be in charge of on one condition. You stay professional. And everybody hears this like, what? Well, um, and All Might goes, I'm always professional, sir. I'll do it. And he goes, okay. Now. And All Might w walks out of the room, closes the door, walks over to Class 1B and says, Hello, young slayers. I am here. And they hear him through the wall. And Nezu goes, and he walks over to the wall, and yes, he's short. He pulls out his repeater, because he's a, a fist and repeater main, a striker and repeater main. He takes out one of his repeaters, and he shoots through the wall, hitting All Might in the back of the head with a blaze shot, which goes boom on impact, because it's specially made for, for that. And he shuts up. And Nezu says, I will have to do this then. He clicks a button. The partition opens and says, well then, seems like I have to show both of you your classes early. And he glares at All Might and All Might's feeling this pressure again. And he's like, oh, where is this coming from? And he's looking around and he sees something. He sees a creature that he doesn't like. He absolutely hates. He sees a Thrax. And he's biting back his tongue so bad. So Nezu explains, you guys are going to be doing a spar. It's either going to be a one-on-one -on -one or a class v. class. Or maybe a one-on-two class. And everybody hears that and goes, wait, what? Except for one person. Well, actually, two people. Izumi and Bakugo. Izumi goes, I like that one more. And Bakugo goes, oh, God, please don't destroy it. It's too bad. And Izumi goes, nah, I'm the beast. And Bakugo thinks of scenes from Beauty and the Beast and then replaces her with Beauty and Izumi with Beast, or Beast with Izumi. And 
she gets a nosebleed from it. Even though Izumi is shorter than Bakugo, Bakugo has a well-developed chest. Izumi does not. And if I said she does, she does not. I'm retconning she does not have a chest. She's a lolly in this one. So she could pass for a guy if she cut her hair and put on guy clothes. Which I actually am going to be doing an April Fool's Day a one in this, but I'm not going to actually have the it on April Fool's Day. I'm probably actually going to put it in the next episode, which will probably come out on either Sunday, which I may not be able to do, or Monday, which might still not happen. So hopefully I can get those days done. But since I'm going to be out of town, at a different location, recording may be hard. Just warning you guys. Probably going to be say that, saying that for the next two days because I'm going to be uploading today. Tomorrow I'm going to be recording a few episodes of this. And this is the one I want to do and get finished before I leave for the cabin. So I'm probably going to be cranking this one out. So <sighs> Bakugo saw this image. And got a nosebleed. Mina saw that Bakugo is currently having a nosebleed. And walks over and says, Tea, spill, now. And Nezu, hearing tea, says, Okay, that's the rules. Um, Get out there. And he walks directly over to Bakugo and says, I heard tea. And Izumi goes into the rift with her shinobu on her shoulder. Currently wrapped around her. Yeah, I said she had a chest. She does not have a chest. I'm retconning she does not have a chest. I think it's just going to be funnier that way. She does not have a chest. Uh... <laughs> um... Featuring Michael Bay. I don't know why I'm thinking of featuring Michael Bay. No, I'm not featuring Michael Bay. After a few minutes, Izumi's already out in the field. And she has... One war pike, One pair of repeaters. One pair of strikers. One axe. One pair of chain blades. And she hates the chain blades. She absolutely hates them. One hammer. And these are all her main weapons. Her chain blade is radiant. And she only uses that whenever she has to fight a uh, umbral behemoth that is heroic. Because she can't use any of her normal weapons for a heroic umbral behemoth. On normal circumstances. If it's a Thrax, she can easily just smash it upside the head with the hammer. But if it's a Shroud or a Rift Stalker that's heroic... She must use the chain blades. Which I'll get into later. Nezu walks out after Baku lo it now looks completely drained of energy. Be right back. Baku com looks completely drained of energy. And Izumi walks over to Baku and Baku immediately gets a nosebleed from Izumi walking over. Because she's still thinking of very, very naughty scenes and I'm going to end it there hopefully you guys enjoyed it, that little uh, filler episode but I'm getting tired I need sleep I made a promise that if Nux Taku or Lord Nux Nenor Whatever you want to call him by. Melody's ex. Whatever you want to call him. The sucker of Melody's toes. Whatever. Calls me out to do a Joe Star what if. Or any kind of JoJo what if. What if Femdeku was Joe Star? What if Femdeku was any of the... Uh, my, or not my hero. Damn it. Any of the JoJo Bizarre Adventure characters. I would do it. I will do it if he calls me out and I see it on one of his YouTube videos. I will do it. But if he does not call me out, 
then I won't do it. But there's another precursor, or not precursor, another condition if he does call me out. I will do a what if Deku was Lord Nuxton or, or Nuxtaku before I'll do the Joe Star what if. So what if Deku was Nuxanor or Lord Nuxanor or Nuxtaku? And I'm going to give you a spoiler. His quirk, flex. That's that's the only spoiler. It's the only thing I'm going to give you. If you guys like this, consider hitting the like button. If you guys would like to subscribe, um, helps me out if you guys subscribe because if I get a hundred, damn it, one thousand five hundred before my birthday, which I'm not telling you my birthday, so it could be tomorrow, it could be a few months from now. Just saying, it, it it's not tomorrow or the next day. I I swear it's not this month. So you guys have a little time. If I get to one thousand five hundred by my birthday, I'll start another channel. And make it gaming. The Unsmooth Criminal. Games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be fun. Where it's going to be mainly among us at first. Until I can get a lot more people to see me. And then I can start buying more games for you guys to play with me with. Or for me to play for you guys just to watch. I'm going to be mainly doing it live. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, consider smashing that like button. And if you guys have made it this far into the video, after I said this is the end, hit, type in the comments, next flex, and then add Nuxtaku. Uh, <laughs> yeah, add him. Make him call me out. Do it. You won't. You won't. <laughs> Please don't do it. <laughs> Even though I have all the jo uh, Jojo, those bizarre adventure characters laid out, I, I don't want to do them. It's so weird. <laughs> the ants are so weird. But if you guys do, I'm prepared. I, I don't want to do them though. It'll be my. It'll be like my. Uh, what if? Fem Deku was a Nico series. You guys apparently loved that series. I don't know why. Perverts. Who am I kidding? I'm the pervert who made it. We're all Minettas here. And Kaminaris. Well, at least we don't have diaper, diaper porn on our computers. Oh. Well, I don't. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy. Remember. Have you guys made it this far into the video? Type next flex in the comments and I'll immediately heart it no matter what. Even if you start putting curse words after. I don't care. I'll heart it because it says next flex. Talk to you guys later.